Yeah, man. We gotta cross that water. Hey, we in survival drop 101. We talking about expedient water crossing. We're in chapter 17 of this very handy uh, U.S. survival manual FM 21-76, man. Get the drop. Click the links below. Hey, hop to all the wave surfers. Everyone who's continuing to support our Toe Texas family. What it do to you? Shalawah, man, just to all the recent donations and everyone showing Ahab over here, you know what I mean? Just showing that you ain't letting up, that you're going to continue to be, you know, a solid rock, you know what I'm saying? A pillar for our Nagas, just that steady water, you know what I mean? We're talking that water today, crossing that water today, you know what I mean? And we can only do it together. And, uh, you know, this is something great, you know what I mean, that we can just say, yeah, we are not only helping our family, you know what I mean, that's been affected in Texas, and we are also, you know, able to, you know, stack up for any other emergency happening in not just the Texas area, but just other areas as well. So keep supporting. So we got what we need when we need it, Managa. A hop to all the dragons on the wall, all the contributors on the cash app. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate you there. We appreciate you on the PayPal. Everything you're doing to keep the lights on at 432 The Drop Radio. Let's pick it up from here. In a survival situation, you may have to cross a water obstacle. It may be in the form of a river, a stream, a lake, a bog, quicksand, quagmire, muskeg, even in the desert, flash floods occur, making streams an obstacle. Whatever it is, you need to know how to cross it safely. You can apply almost every description to rivers and streams. They may be shallow or deep, slow or fast moving, narrow or wide. Before you try to cross a river or stream, develop a good plan. Your first step is to look for a high place from which you can get a good view of the river or stream. From this place, you can look for a place to cross. If there is no high place, climb a tree. Good crossing locations include a level stretch where it breaks into several channels. Two or three narrow channels are usually easier to cross than a wide river. Hmm. You know, it's all about identifying these things, you know what I'm saying? To say, okay, I can identify, you know, a, a narrow channel. You know, I can see, oh, this breaks off into that. This is all just identification, my Nagas. It takes a little practice, but you the Naga, man. You know, we're just waking you up to what's already in you. You already got this drop, man. Let's go. A shallow bank or sandbar. So look that up. What does a sandbar look like? How can you identify a sandbar when you see one? If possible, select a point upstream from the bank or sandbar so that the current will carry you to it if you lose your footing. A course across the river that leads downstream so that you will cross the current at about a 45 degree angle. The following areas possess potential hazards. Avoid them if possible. Obstacles on the opposite side of the river that might hinder your travel. Try to select the spot from which travel will be the safest and easiest. A ledge of rocks that crosses the river. This often indicates dangerous rapids or canyons. A deep or rapid waterfall or a deep channel. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely don't cross Near no waterfall, my night. <laughs> Never try to ford a stream directly above or even close to such hazards. Rocky places. You may sustain serious injuries from slipping or falling on rocks. Usually submerged rocks are very slick, making balance extremely difficult. On occasion, an occasional rock that breaks the current, however, may help you. Right, these are great identifiers for your safety. And 
ensuary of a river. An ensuary is a normal is normally wide, has strong currents, and is subject to tides. These tides can influence some rivers many kilometers from their mouths. Go back upstream to an easier crossing site. So you can put all this in to your Google, your whatever search box, man. Estuary or estuary. I said estuary. <laughs> estuary. E S T U A R Y. You know, what does that look like? You want to avoid that. All right? They have strong currents and they carry strong tides. Rocky places. All right? um, look up what the uh, sandbars look like. You know, different things like that. Let's keep going. Also, something called eddies or eddies. An eddy can produce a powerful backward pull downstream of the obstruction, causing the eddy and pull you under the surface, man. So, recon eddies, E D D Y or E D D I E S. The depth of a fordable river or stream is no deterrent if you can keep your footing. In fact, deep water sometimes runs more slowly and is therefore safer than fast moving shallow water. Did you know that? You might just be looking, oh, that's shallow enough to cross, but maybe it's fast moving. Maybe it still has a very strong current. You know what I'm saying? Not that you should try to go into the super deep water where you don't have no footing. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about the balance and again, identify. You can always dry your clothes later. Or if necessary, you can make a raft to carry your clothing and equipment across the river. You must not try to swim or wade across a stream or river when the water is a very low temperatures. This swim could be fatal. So you don't want to swim across when the water is too cold. All right. Try to make a raft or some type wade across if you can only if you get only your feet wet, try them vigorously or dry them vigorously as soon as you reach the other bank. Right, let's look at these rapids, man. If necessary, you can safely cross a deep, swift river or rapid to swim across a deep, swift river. Swim the current. Never fight it. Swim with the current. All right. We always say surf the wave. <laughs> go with that go with that primary man, you know what I'm saying? Don't go against the wave, my naga. Don't go don't go against the water. You dig? <laughs> Try to keep your body horizontal to the water. This will reduce the danger of being pulled under. In fast shallow rapids, lie on your back, feet pointing downstream. Alright. Now Finning or yes, it's finning your hands alongside your hips. This action will increase buoyancy and help you stir away from obstacles. Let's get that again. If you're in a fast, shallow rapid, it says lie on your back, feet pointing downstream, finning your hands like fins, right? Finning your hand alongside your hips. This action will increase buoyancy and help you stir away from obstacles. Keep your feet up to avoid getting them bruised or caught by rocks. In deep rapids, lie on your stomach, head downstream, angling toward the shore whenever you can. Watch for obstacles and be careful of backwater eddies and converging currents, as they often contain dangerous swirls. Converging currents occur when new water courses enter the river or where water has been diverted around large obstacles such as small islands. To ford a swift, treacherous stream, apply the following steps. Remove your pants and shirts to lessen the water's pull on you. Keep your foot gear on to protect your feet and ankles from rocks. It will also provide you with the firmer footing. Tie your pants and other articles to the top of your rucksack or in a bundle if you have no pack. This way, if you have to release your equipment, all your articles will be together. It is, it is easier to find one large pack than to find several small items. Carry your pack well on your shoulders and be sure 
you can easily remove it. If necessary, not being able to get a pack off quickly enough can drag even the strongest swimmers under. Find a strong pole about 7.5 centimeters in diameter and 2.1 to 2.4 meters long to help you forward the stream. Grasp the pole and plant it firmly on your upstream side to break the current. Plant your feet firmly with each step and move the pole, the pole forward a little downstream from its previous position, but still upstream from you. With your next step, place your foot below the pole. Keep the pole well slanted so that the force of the current keeps the pole against your shoulder. Cross the stream so that you will cross the downstream current at a 45 degree angle. So again, you know, why the 45 degree angle? You know what I'm saying? It's like that slant, right? You want to slant your way across that thing. Using this method, you can safely cross currents, usually too strong for one person to stand against. Do not concern yourself about your pack's weight as the weight will help rather than hinder you in fording the stream. I mean, Drop Nation, we talking about crossing that water, that mem sauce. <laughs> Yosef, let go, man. Hey, hop to Yosef, the real. If there are other people with you, cross the stream together. Hey, teamwork make a dream work. Ensure that everyone has prepared their pack and clothing as outlined above. Position the heaviest person on the downstream end of the pole and the lightest on the upstream end. In using this method, the upstream person breaks the current and those below can move with relative ease in the eddy formed by the upstream person. If the upstream person gets temporarily swept off his feet, the others can hold steady while he regains his footing. Mm. So the heaviest person on the downstream end of the pole and the lightest on the upstream end of the pole. All right, all right, all right. Now you may ask, you know what I'm saying, uh, drop, you know what I'm saying, how do I know which one is upstream and which one is downstream? You know, let's, let's dig on this together. How to know upstream from downstream. Yeah, I need to know too. We all need to know, man. Let's go. Now, downstream means towards where the flow ends. At the opposite end of the waterway from the source. So, downstream is opposite from the source. Upstream is closest to the source. So if you are boating from Kingston to Toronto, for example, you are headed upstream. If you're going from Kingston to Cornwall, you are traveling downstream. All right. So, you know, basically it's, it's the end of the source. So, you know, you can tell, okay, this, this water's going that way. It's going towards an ending. So, you know, if it's going whatever direction the water is headed towards, you know what I mean? That would be the downstream end. That's where the flow ends. And wherever that source is coming from, you know, will be the upstream end or pretty much against the against the flow. You know what I'm saying? You would have to go against the flow of water to get back upstream, you know? You can surf the wave downstream, you know what I mean? Interesting, interesting. Direction upstream is the end of the waterway where the flow of water originates ka -ka. think about it in terms of like mount Roraima being the source of the orinoco flow amazon flow you know so that direction towards Roraima would be upstream you know what i mean and the flow that's headed away from Roraima would be downstream okay i mean you can dig on it let's go So again, position the heaviest person on the downstream end of the pole. So if you're going to cross, you got a long pole and everyone's holding on to that pole. The heaviest person should be 
you know what I mean, on the downstream end or basically, you know, at the point you're going at a 45 degree angle. So they're at the point, you know what I mean, where the water is, you know, going towards the end of that water flow. You know what I'm saying? The upstream person should be the lightest and they will be, you know, pretty much in the back of the flow. In other words, you know what I'm saying? You know, more towards the source. If you get, if you got my drift, man, my water drift, man, <laughs> my current, man, let's go. And some good little diagrams in here. So make sure you uh, pull up this drop so you can see what's going on. If you have three or more people and a rope available, you can use the technique shown in figure 17.3 to cross the stream. The length of the rope must be three times the width of the stream. So, you know, if it's a very uh, wide stream, you're going to need three times that width for the rope. You're just reading this diagram. It says the person crossing is secured to the loop around the chest. The strongest person crosses first. Again, downstream. The other two are not tied on. They pay out the rope as it is needed and can stop the person crossing from being washed away. Uh, one unties himself. So if you're looking at the diagram, unties himself and two unties, ties on. Number two crosses controlled by the others. Any number of people can be sent across this way. When two has reached the bank, three ties on and crosses. Number one takes most of the strain, but two is ready in case anything goes wrong. Again, check out the diagrams. Let's keep reading. Let's dig on these rafts. All right. So if you have two ponchos, you can construct a brush raft or an Australian poncho raft. With either of these rafts, you can safely float your equipment across a slow moving stream or river. So let's look at a brush raft. The brush raft, if properly constructed, will support about 115 kilograms to construct it using ponchos, fresh green brush, two small saplings, and rope or vine as follow. Push the hood of each poncho to the inner side and tightly tie off the necks using the drawstrings. Attach the ropes or vines at the corner and side grommets, G-R-O-M-M-E-T-S, of each poncho. Make sure they are long enough to cross to and tie with the others attached at the opposite corner or side. Spread one poncho on the ground with the inner side up. Pile fresh green brush, no thick branches on the poncho until the brush stack is about 45 centimeters high. Pull the drawstring up through the center of the brush stack. Look at the diagrams. Let's go. Make an X frame with two small saplings and place it on top of the brush stack. Tie the X frame securely in place with the poncho drawstring. Pile another 45 centimeters of brush on top of the X frame. Then compress the brush slightly. Pull the poncho sides up around the brush and using the ropes or vines attached to the comber of or side grommets tie them diagonally from comber to corner and from side to side spread the second poncho inner side up next to the brush bundle roll the brush bundle onto the second poncho so that the tied side is down tie the second poncho around the brush bundle in the same manner as you tied the first poncho around the brush I know I got some noggers that got like, <laughs> you know, they, you know, like they, they got them visuals, you know, so they, some of y'all can visualize this. Others, you know, look, look into it. You know what I'm saying? Just he ain't the only one talking about a poncho raft. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you might not never heard of a poncho raft. These are things you got to take that next step, my noggers, because all we're doing is leading you to that water. And in this case, we're leading you across that water. Let's get a few more minutes, man. This is Survival Drop 101 with Con Drop. 
five minutes might save your whole entire life one day, man. So I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Remember, man, take that surf the wave challenge. Make sure you tune in right here at 432 to drop radio at least five times a week, man. You know what I'm saying? And just tell us how you feel, man. Hashtag surf the wave challenge, my naga. Let go for the dismount. So Poncho Raft, okay, place it in the water with the tied side of the of the second poncho facing up. Australian Poncho Raft, if you do not have time to gather brush for a brush raft, you can make an Australian Poncho Raft. This raft, although more waterproof than the Poncho Brush Raft, will only float about 35 kilograms of equipment. To construct this raft, use two ponchos, two rucksacks to 1.2 meter poles or branches and ropes vines boot laces or comparable material as follow push the hood of each poncho to the inner side and tightly tie off the next using the drawstring spread one poncho on the ground with the inner side up place and center the two 1.2 meter poles or branches on the poncho about 45 centimeters apart. Place your rucksacks or packs or other equipment between the poles. Also place other items that you want to keep dry between the poles. Snap the poncho sides together. Using your buddy's help to complete the raft, hold the snapped portion of the poncho in the air and roll it tightly down to the equipment. Make sure you roll the full width of the poncho. Twist the ends of the roll to form pigtails to in, uh, in opposite directions. Fold the pigtails over the bundle and tie them securely in place using ropes, boot laces, or vines. Spread the second poncho on the ground, inner side up. If you need more buoyancy, place some fresh green brush on this poncho. Place the equipment bundle tied side down on the center of the second poncho. Wrap the second poncho around the equipment bundle following the same procedure you used for wrapping the equipment in the first poncho. Tie ropes, boot laces, vines, or other binding material around the raft about 30 centimeters from the end of each pigtail. Place and secure weapons on top of the raft. Tie one end of the rope to an empty canteen and the other end to the raft this will help you tow the raft so you know notice they say weapons so you might not want to get your weapons wet right <laughs> so these are just great ways you know especially the australian poncho raft because it don't carry as much as the brush the uh first one the uh what they call it, the brush raft yeah the brush raft carries more but you got to gather that brush to get more buoyancy you dig you dig Let's get the last one here. Poncho Donut Raft. Another type of raft is the, is the Poncho Donut Raft. It takes more time to construct than the Brush Raft or the Australian Poncho Raft, but it is effective. So, all right, listen up. You've got more time. This is more effective. To construct it, use one poncho, small, sap, small saplings, willows or vines, and ropes, boot laces, and other binding material as follows. Make a framework circle by placing several stakes in the ground that roughly outline an inner and outer circle. Using young saplings, willows, or vines, construct a donut ring within the circle of stakes. Wrap several pieces of cordages around the donut ring about 30 to 60 centimeters apart and tie them securely. Again, look at the figure 17.5, some great illustrations. Push the poncho's hood to the inner side and tie off the neck using the drawstring. Place the poncho on the ground, inner side up. Place the donut ring on the center of the poncho. Wrap the poncho up and over the donut ring and tie off each grommet of the poncho to the ring. Tie one end of a rope to an empty canteen and the other end to the raft. This rope will help you to tow the raft. When launching any of the above rafts, take care not to puncture or tear it by dragging it on the ground. 
Before you start to cross the river or stream, let the raft lay on the water a few minutes to ensure that it floats. If the river is too deep to ford, push the raft in front of you while you are swimming. The design of the above rafts does not allow them to carry a person's full body weight. Use them as a float to get you and your equipment safely across the river or stream. So don't try to just put your whole weight on this thing. <laughs> just use it as a float, as a support, mainly for your equipment. Be sure to check the water temperature before you try to cross a river or water obstacle. If the water is extremely cold and you are unable to find a shallow fording place in the river, do not try to ford it. Devise other means for crossing. For instance, you might Im improvise a bridge by felling a tree over the river, or you might build a raft large enough to carry you and your equipment. For this, however, you need an axe, a knife, a rope or vines, and some time. You can make a raft using any dry, dead, standing trees for logs. However, spruce trees found in polar and subpolar regions make the best rafts. A simple method for making a raft is to use pressure bars latched, lashed securely at each end of the raft to hold the logs together. If the water is warm enough for floating and you do not have time or materials to construct one of the poncho type rafts, you can use variations or various flotation devices to negotiate the water obstacle. Some items you can use for flotation devices are, let's go for the dismount, my knock. You can use your trousers, man. <laughs> Knot each trouser leg at the bottom and tie and close the fly. With both hands, grasp the waistband at the sides and swing the trousers in the air to trap air in each leg. So we're talking about pants, man, not underpants, man. <laughs> Quickly press the sides of the waistband together and hold it underwater so that the air will not escape. You now have water wings to keep you afloat as you cross the body of water. Note, wet, wet the trousers before inflating to trap the air better. You may have to reinflate the trousers several times when crossing a large body of water. Empty containers lash together her empty gas cans, water jugs, ammo cans, boxes, or other items that will trap or hold air. Use them as water wings. Use this type of flotation device only in a slow moving river or stream. We also got plastic bags and ponchos. All right, man, we got to get some ponchos, man. We're going to maybe start, uh, you know, popping off some, uh, you know, beautiful poncho styles anyway, man, for the drop gear, my knock. Let's go. Use your poncho and roll green vegetation tightly inside it so that you have a roll at least 20 centimeters in diameter. Tie the ends of the roll securely. You can wear it around your waist or across one shoulder and under the opposite arm. All right, flotation devices. Right, we got some logs. Use a, use a stranded drip. A, st uh, a stranded drift log if one is available or find a log near the water to use as a float. Be sure to test the log before starting to cross. Some tree logs, palm for example, will sink even when the wood is dead. So you want to avoid the uh, palm tree logs, all right? Because they're going to sink regardless. Another method is to tie two logs about 60 centimeters apart. Sit between the logs with your back against one of your legs over the other. Then you have cattails. Cattails. C-A-T-T-A-I-L-S. Gather stalks of cattails and tie them into a bundle 25 centimeters or more in diameter. The many air cells in each stalk cause a stalk to float until it rots. Test the cattail bundle to be sure it will support your weight before trying to cross a body of water. There are many other flotation devices that you can devise by using some imagination. Just make sure to test the device before trying to use it. And you know, we'll continue 
on the next survival drop with uh, some more of these water obstacles, man. We just are leading you to the water. It's your job, man, to make sure that you stay afloat, to make sure that you go with the wave, my naga. You know what I'm saying? And just, uh, you know, take that extra step, you know, to make sure that you can, you know, really uh, identify, you know what I'm saying, recognize some of these things, even a few of these things, you know, might be a lifesaver, my naga. So, hala hawa for our exodus, you know what I'm saying? Hawa says it. This exodus, man, is going to make you even forget about that last exodus, man, because that's how spectacular and beautiful and pure water it would be. The tribe crossed safely last time. The tribe will cross safely this time, no matter what we got to cross. The main thing we crossing, though, is that frequency. We're frequency and up. We are crossing to another, a higher vibration. So keep the code to make sure your vibe is high. And Hawa got you, you know what I'm saying? In every way that you could prepare and teach your your you know young ones, man, teach your tribe, you know, one thing at a time. I know it might seem overwhelming. Don't be too many mind, too head heavy, you know. Just try to pick up a couple things at at a time. You know what I'm saying? We always like to replay these shows and you know what I'm saying, come back to them. You know, they're right here for you. You can dig on them anytime, over and over again, and then you you know, recon things, you know, separately, you know what I'm saying? Put them together, get your visuals. So, again, you can identify, you know, how to avoid these hazards and obstacles and make sure you cross that river safely, my naga. All praise Hawa for the safe passage. All praise Hawa for the, you know, breath of security that is the Hawa secure breath. Which is, you know, our existence. This is Survival Drop 101 with Khan Drop and Ahab to you, Drop Nation, for all, you know, the energy that you bring, the positivity you bring, the encouragement you bring to us, you know, letting us know that you're right here, shoulder to shoulder, making a stand with a noggin, standing up, you know what I'm saying, for Hawa, it may choke. E, man, putting Hawa over everything. All praise our creator. Peace and power. Yeah, man.